Okay, let's go ahead and um, work in our lab. This lab is gonna be about object-oriented programming. So if you look at your PDF, it's called student client, and it's defined totally in the PDF. In this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and create a project that's gonna have two files. One file is gonna be the non-application class and the other file is gonna be the application class. What we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be creating a class called student and inside of the client, we're gonna instantiate objects based upon that class. If you look at the, the directions that I provide you in the PDF, I enumerate the overall process that you would go through in order to create this project. So let me head, go ahead and go over them with you. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start NetBeans up. And we're gonna start a new project. Java application, next. And if you're following the directions in my PDF, it says create the project college student client. On the desktop, get rid of the packet statement. There's only one project we use the packet statement on, and that is uh, in, in exercise 9.2 using setters and getters. Okay, in this particular one, we're not gonna have a packet statement. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get rid of the unessential comments and I'm gonna align the curly brackets. This is called a client because it uses the service and the service is the class called student. So if you're following the directions on here, it says let's create a non-application class. We're going to go to file, new file, and we're going to create a Java class next. And we're going to go ahead and call this student. Clicking finish. All right, same old story here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the needless comments and align the curly brackets. So notice that I've got one file called student. It does not have main. That's why it's referred to as the non-application class. This is going to be the class that we're gonna to use to instantiate objects like student one, student two, student three. If we click on student client, this file does have a main method we will instantiate the objects inside of main, okay? So since we have not created an object yet, we can't instantiate an object yet. So we're gonna have to spend our time building the student class. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna come inside of student and we wanna define the instance variables. These are going to be private in distinction to public. So we'll say private string student name. And private int student age. And we could have a whole bunch more. But let's just stick with these two. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our constructor, but we're not gonna be able to finish it because we're gonna call some methods that we haven't created it yet. So let's just do um, the uh, shell. So the constructor will be called when the object is instantiated. The 
constructor is a special method that goes by the same name of the class. Notice that it does not have a return, you know, like void or double or anything like that. We'll come back to this later. So now I'm going to go ahead and create some setters and getters for each one of these instance variables. So let's start with name. We'll just go ahead and say public. So void. Set name. And put in the curly brackets. In this particular case, this is a procedure. It receives new name and it will set student name. Okay. Notice how it read the setters return void. Getters return whatever it is, data type that they're working on. So this next one here, public. Particular case, we're going to return a string. Get name. Notice how a getter does not have a parameter. So if it's a getter, we're going to have a return statement. And this is stuff that you need to memorize and understand. So so let's so a setter will set and a getter will return. So the getter does not have a parameter variable, but it does have a return statement. Whereas the setter has an assignment statement, but not a return statement. We're gonna do the same thing for the name, or excuse me, the age. So public void set age in this particular case this would be an int and we'll call it new age that's what's coming in and in this case we'll set the student age if you look above on, on line four you'll notice we've got a gray squiggly on it as soon as i put this line in there that gray squiggly will go away So that is the setter. To, to do the getter, now this um, is an int, so it will return an int. And it will be a return statement. Okay, so those are our setters and getters for each private data member. So encapsulization means we have private data and public methods. That's called encapsulization. Now we're going to go ahead and um, do a few special methods. Now I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit more time on the set age. And I want to put in an if statement that will provide validation. So let's go ahead and say if new age is greater than zero, in that particular case, in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and do something. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and set student age to new age. Else, else if it's not greater than zero, then we'll go ahead and do an S out and say age cannot be negative or zero. Okay. A little validation going on there when you're trying to set the age, when you're setting it. 
So the next uh, method that we're gonna go ahead and do is the full string method. So we'll do public string, full string, And inside of here, we'll go ahead and notice you've got that little error message because it's a function and we haven't returned anything yet. As soon as we put in this return statement, it'll go away. So we'll say return, we'll go down the line, we'll say name, colon. We need a little space uh, after the colon. Let's do name. And we'll keep going left to right. We'll have a little space there because we're going left to right. Age colon space and concatenate that with student age. Okay. So that's our full string method. We'll be using these methods inside of the client. The next method that we're gonna uh, work on is the determine type student method. So public string, so it, it is a function. Long word for method, but it says what it does. And that's the benefit of the long name. So first thing I'll do is I will initialize type to the empty string. Then I'll go down an if then else ladder and return type. Let me go ahead and put in the return statement so that error message can go away so it won't drive me nuts. All right? Then I come back to the middle of my Oreo and work on my code here. So we'll say if, and that, do not be alarmed by that, that happens because, you know, I have an if and I haven't finished it yet. Okay, so bear with me, let's, let's build our if, or else if ladder here. So if condition is student age, student age is greater than or equal to zero, and student age less than or equal to four, what then? Then we will assign preschool to type. And we'll say else if student age equals Five and equals the test for equality is two equal signs. Remember, type gets kindergarten. We'll have another LSF. We'll go ahead and do another test. Student age greater than or equal to six and student age less than or equal to 10. In this case, what are we gonna do? We'll assign what? Elementary school. We'll assign elementary school to type. Living dangerously, I will select these two lines of code. Do a control C, go down the line, do a control V. You either love it or hate this, right? Let's do it again. Okay, so uh, next age on here, we're gonna go 11 to 13. And in which case they'll be in middle school. Next one on here uh, will be 14 to 17.
and in which case they would be in high school. Or at least some will, right? <laughs> then we'll have an else. No, no, we'll have uh, one more. We'll have an else if. Student age is greater than or equal to 18, in which case we're just going to put them in college, right? The last catch, the else, we'll use that to just assign invalid to type. Even though you'll see that we're not going to be able to test all of these things. Or yeah, we could, but we would have to instantiate different uh, objects with different uh, private data members. So this method is complete. Let's look at this before we move on. So this is the class definition. Oh, it's good that I went back and looked at this. I see the constructor's not finished yet. And in the constructor, we're going to go ahead and call two methods. Set name, which we get new name, and set age. Okay, now we can go ahead and, and do the grand look over. So this is the client, right? No, this is the service. <laughs> so the service is the file that does not have main, right? This is the class that we're going to instantiate uh, objects off of. So we have a capitalization being demonstrated here because we have private data and public methods. So this constructor here will be called when we create the object. And a constructor is a special method that does not have a return type and goes by the same name as the class. Right. So now I'm ready to come back over here to student client. And if you look at the PDF, I provide you with uh, information to type out the client. You know, so the two words here are service and client. The service contains the class and the client uses the class, right? So now we're gonna go to the student client and we're gonna go ahead and instantiate a few objects and change a few things and show a few things. This is kind of just a little exercise in showing how things work. Again here, remember, I'm counting on you to go in there and put the general comments. Put them in at least in the student client. So the first thing we're going to do is instantiate student one and student two. And we're going to have another client excuse me, another another object being instantiated here. And we'll call this student two. In this case, it'll be Jan. And she'll be 13, lucky 13. So what happens here, this is very similar to declaring a primitive data type in that you've got int age or string name. But in this case, we've got student and then student one. So student is the name of the class. Student one is the object. The new keyword calls the constructor that's in the other file. And it passes Bob in 15. So when this object is instantiated, Bob in 15 is passed to the constructor. So Bob goes into new name and 15 goes into new age. Those are then passed 
as arguments to the set name and set age methods. Well, what those methods do is then allow for the data to be updated. Okay, that's encapsulation. May sound a little screwy, believe it or not, you will get used to it if you keep at it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show the name, the age, and the type of the stu of student one. So let's do an S out. And we'll say name colon. And the way we're going to do this is by using the dot operator. So student one dot, and we'll say get name. See? And you know it's going to get Bob, right? And then we'll do another S out. And we'll say age colon, and then concatenate that with student one dot get age and you know that that'll say 15 right the next thing we'll uh, do on here is determine the type of student so we'll do s out and we'll say type of student and concatenate that with student one and then determine type of student it's kind of long, so I'll just go ahead and put that on the next line. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do then on here is we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and use the full string method on student one. So what we're doing is we're making a comparison between getting information from student one versus using the full string on student two, which really ends up getting the same information, but formats it in a different way. So I'll do an S out, and then I'll go ahead and say student one, full string. So what I'm doing here is I'm calling the full string method of student one, student two, excuse me, student two dot full string. It's a method, so it takes an open and closed parenthesis. It calls full string. So if you come over here, you'll notice it'll print out name and age, but it'll go left to right. This is to contrast doing the same thing that I did with student one, utilizing the get method versus a full string method which gets the data directly from inside of the class. It's just a comparison. Second line on here would be to determine the type of student. So we'll do another S out. And in this particular case, we'll say type of student colon, and then concatenate that with student two. and determine type of student. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that on, on the line here because it goes slightly over the red line. Not much. Most people would just leave it there, I think. It's hardly anybody prints anymore. So the next thing we want to do now is want to mutate the data, change the data with the set versus the get. So getter methods get, they return, setter methods utilize an assignment statement, right? So let's go ahead and do what many times is referred to as mutation. So we're going to mutate the name and the age of student one. So we'll say student one, set name, I ended up doing the wrong one using the tab key and it didn't work out right. Let's try that again. Set name. My tab key is not doing right. I'm trying to save a little bit of time, but it's not helping out. So let's just spell it out completely here. So we'll do a set name. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and pass Ted. 
he had he went to the lawyer and changed his name. You know what I mean? We'll do that again. Or it was an error, right? It was an error in the record keeping error. Set age. And my tab key's not doing it again. So set age. And in this particular case, we'll change the age to 35. Last thing we'll do is we'll show the data to uh, using full string to verify that things have been changed. So we'll do S out and we'll say student one full string. And then we'll say S out again. And we'll say type of student. Should that be capital? No, I guess not. Colon space. And we'll say student one. And determine type of student. All right. Let's go ahead and press enter right here. And we'll take a grand look at this again one more time. So we're notice how we're typing this inside of main. So the first thing I do is instantiate two objects. I worked on the first one, then for this uh, utilizing uh, get methods. Second one I worked on uh, was the uh, second object. I used the full string method to pretty much show the same data, but instead of going one line after the other, which happens on front lines, I go left to right. Okay. And then I modify or update or mutate, whatever words you want to say, student one data. I set name of student one to Ted 35. So Bob changes to Ted and his age changes to 35. And then I say, okay, let's see if this did take effect. We'll go into student one dot full screen, full string and verify that there was a change. So let's go ahead and, and run this and see what happens. So here's the output down below. So first of all, we start off with uh, student one, which is Bob 15, which is high school. Is that high school? Let me verify that they may have got my relational operators uh, right or wrong. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I guess you know how you define it. You know, I... and then we've got Jan. And notice how her, her information is going left to right. Now this drives some students bad because they want to have this compulsively printed out. If I did this this format with Bob 15 type of student, why not do it again with this one? Uh, yeah, that would be cool. But we're just making a demonstration here of the comparison of using the uh, getters methods versus the full string method that's utilized inside of the class. That's what's going on here. So we're using the full string method to show the same data going left to right versus going down. Then we mutate student one. So Bob's name changes to Ted, and we show this going left to right as well. So hopefully that won't hurt too many people's brains about, you know, hopefully you understand why we're, why we're doing this. We're just simply making a comparison between using getter methods versus the, the full string method here that pretty much accomplishes the same thing. One uses the object dot member and this one is able to access the private data member directly because it is in the file, it doesn't have to go through a, uh, a method, okay? So that's the program. Let me run it one more time just to make, make sure you uh, uh, understand how this works. And if you look at your PDF, uh, you can go ahead and see the test data. And my, my program uh, runs exactly like the test data. So that's all I have just to, this is our 
first um, example of uh, object-oriented programming. And basically what it uses is a, is a class. In this case, we used student. One of the more important concepts here, again, is the, is the constructor. And the constructor is called when you instantiate the object. So when I instantiate or create an object here, the constructor is called. The constructor is called because of this new keyword. So the new keyword calls the constructor and it passes Bob 15. So Bob 15 comes in the new name and new age and they're sent to the set name and set age methods which provide assignment statements to the private data member. Okay, so that is our program guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it and understood it. And uh, that's all I have to say about uh, object-oriented programming for today. Thank you.